Greetings, everyone. My name is Charlie, and this is Paradox's new grand strategy game, Victoria 3. In Victoria 3, I'm going to put my econ economics education to the test to attempt to stabilize and form a, an, an alternative history to my country, the United States. The United States is a very interesting place in this time period because there is uh, essentially been 60 years since we signed the Declaration of Independence. We've been free of the of the British for about half a century and uh, economic dominance is the goal, but we're going to have our own little goals as well. And our journal will walk us through what we need for economic dominance as we go. But I'm going to pay less attention to that and more attention to my people because this is a economics and a geopolitical simulation game that is quite deep and also quite fun now you can play as any country you want in this game from giant nations like great king aka china to russia to sweden you can do egypt uk all the way to this tiny little island like spiff you can do whatever you want but in this case i'm playing with a fragmented and not yet complete country known as the united states of america and in this game, what I'd like to do is form the United States to be similar to what it is today, uh, so a more modern United States, but I'd also like to explore what would it look like if we were just really greedy and never stopped expanding? What if we just kept colonizing? As we move out west, we're gonna take out some of these Indian areas, these uh, Native American Indians areas. Now, I am going to do my best to do my best for the Native Americans. In this case, every single action I can take in the game for the tool set will be in favor of the Native Americans. But eventually, the game is going to force me to migrate them and move them into, uh, at least in this case, the Cherokee will be moved to the Indian Territory. Uh, and if any of these guys uprise and get in my way, we are going to have to settle them down uh, aggressively. Aggressive negotiations will take place. Um, I am not going to start it, but I will defend my people against it. We also, as you'll notice, have Texas over here, which is its own independent state in 1836. Texas is currently, with this gold line you can see, Texas is currently attempting to, de uh, to defend its independence from Mexico, which is trying to take over this territory. So hopefully they do, and if they do manage to do this successfully, then we might be able to get them to uh, talk to us and uh, get them to join our union as we did in history. If for some reason Mexico wins, as it's kind of a 50-50, depending on how you start the game, then we're going to have to you know, go to war with Mexico, which we're going to have to do anyway, because we need all this land over here too. And maybe we'll just take all of Mexico. Who knows? And maybe we'll get up into Alberta. It could happen. Uh, okay, so there's a lot to talk about in this game. I'm going to try to include timestamps below if there's any that are relevant. But ultimately, this first video is going to be about an hour. And uh, I am going to be explaining a little bit about what I'm going to be doing. But I'm also going to be doing it while I explain it. So hopefully it's not too slow for you. It's a big complicated game. I want you to actually understand what's going on. So first, let's take a look at four fundamental, very important numbers for us in this game. And that is these numbers up here. We have bureaucracy, authority, influence and our money, which I'm just going to call dollars from now on. And I can't change the symbol. I wish I could. But we're going to use that. Uh, so this is ultimately our running balance. This is either our surplus or deficit. Okay, it's not our total money. It's a, to it's a running deficit uh, or surplus. Our total money is here. We're allowed to hold a little bit more. Uh, basically, we're allowed to hold about 6 million, it looks like. 5.93 million as a gold reserve. This will go up over time. Hopefully, we'll have some left. Uh, I'll most likely go into debt as we go into this series, but it is what it is. For our country, we're currently at low taxation levels which makes sense. We just escaped high taxation. That was the entire reason for this. Um, if you're not familiar with American history, feel free to ask questions. I'm sure somebody in the comments can answer it as well. I will attempt to do my best to give a relatively accurate representation of history as I understand it. Uh, but there's, of course, lots of things I don't understand. I'm not a, I didn't have a history major, okay? I went to school for a very different thing than history. Okay. We also have government wages and military wages, which you can play with as well. The goal is going to be to stabilize the country. Now, it's not inherently unstable now, but people want their their quality of life to go up for the taxes that they're paying. We have a lot of different territories, which are basically states, and we're going to focus on northern states for now, because again, if you're not familiar with American history, in about, uh, what is it, 15 years or so? In 1861, anyway, uh, we are going to see 
Uh, so my math is terrible. <laughs> um, in 1861, we saw in history, in real history, a civil war. The South basically tried to secede from the Union over a fight uh, for a variety of reasons, the majority of which had to do with our ab abolition of slavery. The Southern states in 1836 are slave states. They do employ African-American, uh, they're not citizens, I guess. So they do employ uh, slaves throughout um, a lot of the Southern states. I want to preempt, uh, preempt this by saying that everything I say in these videos for the series has to do with Victoria 3 and our gameplay, as well as history. It is not representation or is not a representation of what it's like right now or my feelings about how things are right now. It is everything about this is exclusive to this game and our playthrough within this history. OK, so, for example, when I say the Democratic Party is the pro-slavery party, I'm not talking about today's Democratic Party. I'm talking about 1836 Democratic Party, which is exactly what this is, comprised of uh, the Southern planters. They currently have 18.7 percent clout in this country which is their measurement of basically how much authority they have, how much influence they have in, in the country so far. Basically, the slave owners are running the show, as are the rural folk. But eventually, we're going to have a new party rise up, and that is the Whig Party, who is going to win the next election because that's just scripted in. So they'll win the next election, and that will allow me to reform government as I see fit to start my playthrough. Now, government structure aside, we also have three different tabs uh, our columns here for different laws we can enact. A lot of these are not the way we want them. So we're going to have to work over time to make them this way. It is not going to be fast. The, the United States did not have a population that was in support of a lot of these changes. For example, child labor. Right now, it's allowed. Children could work in the factories, very dangerous jobs. We could put kids to work. Uh, I can't actually do anything with this because I know I do not currently have an interest group in my government that supports this change. Yeah. In fact, we have no healthcare systems at all and nobody supports a healthcare system. Kind of interesting. We also do not have any rights for women. In fact, women are considered property and under the legal ownership and guardianship of men. They enjoy very few rights. We're going to change this. Getting to property to women does not mean that women are property. This allows women to actually own property. Women in the workplace allows them to work. And then finally, women's suffrage will allow them to vote as well. Make them legally the same as men. This is where we want to get to. There's a lot of things we need to do to get there. Finally, as we enact certain types of policies and laws, we will also get new institutions added. And then we can go ahead and expand those as we go. We'll talk about those later. All right. So the biggest and most important thing is stability and that means quality of life which means we need to look at the market i said this was an economics game and i said i'm gonna have to put my economics knowledge to the test so here we go we have to look at the american market we currently have a deficit and many different things and a surplus and other things we can use trade we can expand our industries we can do lots of other things but as we expand our industries it's going to cost us money to start this off i'm going to go in to the trade lens tab and you could go to the construction sector the construction tech sector allows me to construct things faster. The more I have, the better it is. And also the state construction efficiency goes up if the, that state has a construction sector in it. So you can stack this all in one state if you want to, but if you're planning to expand in multiple states, you're going to want to expand it in multiple states. New York already has three. We're going to add one more. We're also going to add one to Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and where's DC, 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 DC. These are the states I'm going to focus on in the beginning. I may also focus a little bit with West Virginia to get their minds and maybe a little bit in Indiana later, but these are the states we're going to focus on in the, in the initial. Okay. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to go ahead and do West Virginia because I'm pretty sure I'm going to use them. Okay. Let's go ahead and run the, run the time on the bottom right of the screen. There's a lot of world events popping up. We don't care about most of these. Um, the ones we're really going to care about are things that happen uh, around us that are within our interest. For example, Texas statehood is that added to the journal. Let's take a look at that. Texas statehood says we observe conflict between Mexico and Texas with great interest. Should the Texan Republic in emerge triumphant, we should try to sway them towards joining our rightful union. Now, again, this is dependent on them being triumphant, and that's not a guarantee. Sometimes Mexico will just stomp all over them. Other times, Texas will stomp all over and defend themselves. 
when it depends on how you start the game okay i would very much like texas to win it's more historically accurate for that to happen but it doesn't necessarily happen if it doesn't happen we'll have to go to war with mexico and take texas back it's just the way it is okay so as i run the clock actually as we run the clock we should start to see the to start to see this happen yeah so looks to me like texas has twice the strength of mexico at least on this front line right now so it is definitely looking like texas is going to win their freedom okay good so we're going to want to do a couple of things while our construction sector is expanding yep we're going to want to go into research first so let's f first go into research and i want to start the water tube boiler this is going to allow my steel mills coal iron uh my furniture manufacturers basically everything that i really care about is going to be improved by having this we're going to be able to do more work with less people so let's get that done next in order to make things uh better for people in order to make things more comfortable for people we need to get the prices down consumers like to shop but they don't like to shop when things are really overpriced right we're kind of going through that right now in the world, right? Inflation is really high, and that's because we have a huge supply problem and um, a lot of demand. And so what ultimately our Federal Reserve is doing right now is killing our economy, bringing the demand way down, and that should hopefully equalize supply with demand. And that way, things can refluctuate, rebalance, and hopefully prices can stabilize. That's kind of what's been going on. What we have right here is something kind of similar. Fabric is in really high demand. We don't have enough of it. Clothing, also in high demand. It's only an 8% surplus right now, but if we don't do something about it, it's going to get worse. The more people that are there, the more people want clothes. And we have two different types of clothes. There's regular clothes, but there's also fancy clothes. And those are down here, luxury clothes. Luxury clothes right now are 57% higher than their base price. If you're ever wondering what the base price is, just take a look at something like uh, arms right here. It's actually not, it's actually not showing that. Uh, there's got to be a graph here that'll show it. Apparently not. Maybe it will uh, as we as we play a longer, uh, but it's not showing it right now. There should be a red line on that graph that'll show you the base price, and then the white line is where the price currently is. Okay, so what we're looking for here is we need to stabilize these prices. Fabric is a big surplus because it's in a massive deficit. So let's see if we can focus on that. In order to to get fabric up domestically, I'm gonna have to expand the cotton fields in the in the south. And I don't want to do that because it means more slaves. But as it is right now, fabric is being exported somewhere. We don't want to export fabric somewhere. So we're going to take away the export for fabric. Taking away the export for fabric should give us a surplus of fabric, which has now dropped the price down. So now we'll see that the price is 17% discounted. Okay, good. Now this should make our clothing industries more profitable because their inputs the input for their goods, I'm trying to get an actual, let's just go to an individual nation here real quick. Uh, let's go to textile mills, okay? The inputs that they have are going to cost less. Fabrics price is down. There's the dip. And also dye, which is a base price right now. So as a result of that, these guys can be more profitable, which means they can be more productive. And also means with their productivity, if their demand goes up, I can also expand this, which I plan to do. Now, having construction sectors in these areas is very good, but you'll notice as we construct things, as I, as I go through this, let's just pause it really quick. If I hover over top of this, you're going to see that my government currently has a temporary national expense of 12.2 thousand. That's how much construction goods are costing me. And right now, I'm only, my only construction good, or the only construction I'm doing is expanding my construction sector. What I hope to do is get this to like maybe the upper 50s, mid 50s, or something like that to where we can construct everything we want, but not necessarily go into debt, okay? Or go into a deficit. I don't wanna do that. We're going to go into a deficit. There's no way I'm keeping this number green. It absolutely will happen because when you're growing rapidly, you're spending rapidly, okay? It's just the way it is. We also have geopolitical things that'll happen alongside while we're doing this. So let's take a look at that really quick. This is Worcester and Georgia. Jackson's decided he doesn't want to do what the Supreme Court says, and he's decided that the removal of the Cherokee people to the Indian Territory will go now. We're saying, is it even legal? And now we're adding the Indian removal to the Journal of the United States of America. So basically all the states where the Cherokee are, they're being told they all need to migrate. All of you need to move. We're coming in here. You all need to move. This is your dedicated territory. We're condensing you from being able to inhabit all of this 
and now you can only you're all going to be right here in Oklahoma. Now, I didn't make up the rules, but the game is going to force me to do it. I could delay it, but the game is going to force me to do it. The abolitionist martyrdom already happened. This is an ardent abolitionist writer dying in a firefight against a pro-slavery mob, which had gathered in front of his house. The story's gone national, radicalized previously apathetic individuals, high and low. It's going to be a lot of radicalism in this game. We're going to try to avoid that best we can. Again, we're going to use economics to our benefit to try to make people's lives better, but it's a struggle because there's a lot going on here, and there's a lot of different interest groups. Um, we have two options to choose when, when these events happen. We can either choose this one, and there's the, the effects that'll happen, or we choose this one, and then there's those effects. In this case, we would really like someone to become an abolitionist. An abolitionist is a person who believes that slavery should be abolished. And an ideology being a slaver, I think you can understand that one. If I don't choose an option, because these things do time out as time goes on. I didn't pause it, by the way. Time's still going. Um, 50 days, right? If this if this ticks down, then the option with this check mark is the one that is automatically selected for me. Which is fine. This is the one I want. So Winfred Scott is now going to become an abolitionist. Winfred Scott currently is a major general in the army. He's with the armed for armed forces and that means he has some clout that means he's giving uh some sort of influence on the world and i want him to be an abolitionist so here we go okay need a lot more people to be abolitionists now the next thing i want to do and i can't do it yet until the election so once the election's done then i can do it but one thing i can do is i can use my authority to suppress or bolster any type of uh i guess faction right i can, I can bolster or or suppress them, right? Now, I can't do a suppression to anyone who is currently in my government, but I would like to suppress the Southern Planters. I want them to suppress really hard. I want their membership to drop to zero, okay? Because these guys are the pro-slavery, elitist, patriarchal, nonsense party. Um, these guys are the guys that are, the, these are the baddies, okay? We want to get rid of them because they are men first and men only. We're better than everyone else, and they are, they're very bigoted. They, you know, they're the white supremacists. They are the pro-slavery people, okay? Again, Southern planters in this game, not people who are farmers in the South right now, okay? Keep everything in context. That's this. They're kind of led by John Calhoun, who is, well, yeah, he's that guy. So the bigoted guy, right? He's, he actually has bigoted as a trait, too. So they're led by John Calhoun, and Andrew Jackson is really not that much better than him, honestly. So, to get things stabilized, we need to consider what people want. What people want is a roof over their head, clothes on their back, food on their table, right? The basics. So let's start getting things built for them. We have 52 construction capacity. I think that's a good balance right now because if we get any more, we'll start producing things, and then, like, you know, our balance starts ticking down really fast. So I'd rather not do that. I have to start raising taxes, and I want to do that. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at New York. It's the most populated state in the union, and it's currently got a GDP of $4.8 million with a population that has slightly declined since the last time it ticked, but it's at 2.2. They currently have a standard of living of impoverished, 14.8. As long as you keep their minimum expected um, level, so they expect struggling, 8.9, you keep them above what they expect, and generally they won't revolt. But people can become radicalized if their standard of living is decreasing. So even if I have it at 14.8 right now, let's say it drops to 12. Still higher than 8.9, but it dropped to 12. And that's going to make a little bit of them more radicalized. I have that being offset right now by having lower taxes at the start, which gives me negative 10% radicals from standard of living decreases. Some people's standard of living is going to decrease, but we're going to focus on these states here first, and then we'll start working about these other ones. And then I'm not really going to do a whole lot of expansion down here until slavery is abolished and I can ensure that they're not going to rise up against me because I want the South weak if I'm going to have to fight against them. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to focus on a couple of core industries, wood, tools, iron, I think are the main industries to work on, maybe, maybe fabric as well, because... Well, my cost of production. As I build things, I'm also going to be buying supplies on the global market. So I'm going to get clothes going by selecting this one so they can go. I'm using Pennsylvania's textile mills, which have a pre pretty reasonable productivity. And I'm going to expand them. I'm going to grow on that. 
so they can have more workers, okay? I also have a slight problem with my bureaucracy right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my government administration building in, Colum in District of Columbia. And I'm going to change this building to use a standardized filing system instead. This is a different production method. And almost every building that you can build in this game has different production methods you can toggle. In this case, my government administration building is using filing cabinets because there's kind of a paper shortage. So we're going to also be expanding and getting a paper and getting paper going as well. For now, though, I think the standardized filing system is going to work because I'm going to need the bureaucracy for the other things I want to do. So we're going to take that. Now we're left with 153 bureaucracy. What am I going to use that for? I'm going to go into the market. And you see all these different things we're short on and some of the things we have a surplus on. Yeah, we're going to make trade routes. So trade routes take bureaucracy to manage them. And the more bureaucracy you have, well, the more you can manage. We currently have an export and an import route for furniture, which is odd, but uh, very important because I can't really make a whole lot of it right now. We're also importing a ton of clothes, which again is pretty good. Um, we need that for our people, but yet we still have a negative in clothing. So let's work on that too. Uh, it doesn't look like I can get rid of any of my export routes. Most likely that's because other countries have started that route. It's another country's route. So this says American route here, but there's also another route that's not an American route there. These small arms doesn't say American route, which means somebody else has that for me. So like these countries are currently buying small arms from me. All right. So first thing I'm going to look at is the price of iron. We're actually at a surplus of iron right now. So 13% down. Very nice. Uh, that'll probably grow as I start to build things. That'll definitely go up. Um, paper currently at a deficit of the paper. So we're going to need to work on that. I'm actually going to build the paper in Scranton, uh, Pennsylvania. If you know why, then you're one of the cool kids. I'm going to actually get a, a tier two paper mill in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So there we go. Let's let this run. Now, a couple of the other things I can do, I can go into my diplomatic lens. I can declare certain interests in different countries and everything, which I'm not going to do yet. I can say establish colony, which is me telling my, my country that yes, you are allowed to colonize these areas. Technically, we're not allowed to do that yet. There's just not enough people moving out this way. Um, I think actually, because we already, oh, we already have a colony here. Oh, you're counting that. Okay. Okay, no problem. Um, and then we can also do a variety of different diplomatic plays. These, harder to explain, but essentially, these are things that you want to do that involve other nations, okay? Diplomatic actions, kind of the same thing. Anything you want to do that involves different action, different uh, nations and stuff, you have a lot of different options here. Military lenses, it's kind of the same thing. Army, Navy, etc. Uh, Self-explanatory, I mean, not the same thing. Uh, and then we have the political lens, which I'm going to spend a little bit of time in. So I've already expanded my construction sectors. And uh, I'm going to go into decrees now. We're going to use a little bit of our authority for now to add road maintenance. We're going to add road maintenance to Pennsylvania and New York. And Ohio. Mm, and D.C. Now, the reason for doing that is, is twofold. When you do this, you get plus 25% infrastructure. You add more things there. And you get plus 10% state construction efficiency. That's what I'm mostly looking for. If I can make it more efficient to construct in there, in those states, then I can lower my costs. So while I'm improving those states, I will use my authority to make sure that the roads are properly managed. So that's what I'm going to do for now. And then um, bureaucracy, of course. So uh, we need to probably bring in some wheat... Might be a good idea. Uh, let's see if we can maybe bring some wheat in so I don't have to grow it. This is fine. British market, we'll bring it in. Um, I think wood is currently at 11.3%. We're already bringing in wood, but apparently not enough. Let's uh, go into Ohio. We're going to need lots of coal. As we start to expand our own iron market, we're going to need lots of coal. So I'm going to upgrade coal mines here. And then Indiana's logging camps as well. All right. So as we go, you can see that our construction queue at the top has 56 out of 57. And we have a construction queue here. It takes many weeks to build this stuff. And while we're building, if I hover over top of this, now you can see my construction costs are almost 60 grand. This puts us in a massive deficit. We're spending a lot of money right now to expand our infrastructure, to expand this stuff out. And it's very costly. So we're going to we're gonna have to deal with that. And it's also dipping into our reserves. If the reserve gets to zero, we begin to borrow money, right? 
Oh, we have the progressive party just formed. Wow, that's fast. It's like like 30 years ahead of schedule. Um, all right, so progressive party just formed. Uh, that's actually probably a detriment to my plans because it might mean the Democratic Party is more likely to win now. I'd like to see the election. Right here. All right, so the Whig Party is going to be dominating. Okay, good. So um, what typically happens here when a new party comes in is the third party that enters into a two-party system oftentimes ends up being a detriment to their interests. And that's why the three parties, having three parties or four parties or adding a new political party doesn't really work or happen very often in success. Because what generally happens is they end up pulling votes away from the party that they are most similar to. The people who are against their interests anyway are most likely at their most opposition party. And so what ends up happening is you pull votes away from the one that you're more similar to, and that allows the one that you're not similar to to win. In this case, it looks like the Whigs have enough clout anyway with 48% of the votes. So I don't see that necessarily happening, but we might see a change in there. We'll see. As we zoom down here in Ohio, we'll see that they have a shortage of iron. Knew that was going to happen. So let me go into the market really quick and make sure that iron is not skyrocketing in price now. And it is. Now it is 75% more expensive because I'm building things. And that cost is also carrying over to me. I'm paying 75% more for those goods. So I'm going to go into the trade routes. I'm going to find iron, hopefully. Yep, we're going to start pulling it in from the British and French markets. Oh, I want French market. Here, go back out. Iron, 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 iron. We should be pulling in a lot more than that. Uh, I'm going to take away the Spanish market for now. We should be pulling iron in from foreign markets, and that should hopefully stabilize the price of iron. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, should be pulling in a lot more than these markets. The longer these trade routes exist, the more efficient they're going to be as long as you need them. And so if I take a look at the, iron, at the price of iron now... All right, two things popping up at once. Okay. <laughs> right as I went to click on something. All right, let's, I want to bring this down if I can. Let's use it to the side for now. Um, the iron. Now it's 60%. And as this, as this happens, as we start to import more, the relative price should begin to fall. The price based relative to the base price should begin to fall. Okay, we got two things. Let's take a look. John Ross. So John Ross is one of the principal Cher Cherokee chiefs, and he has presented a petition to Congress asking them to avoid the treaty, which would compel the Cherokee Nation to relocate. I said that I would do, in my playthrough anyway, whenever there's an opportunity to help the Native Americans in any way, I would take that option. And so that's what I'm going to do. So a treaty is a treaty. I cannot rescind it. That's not what I'm going to do. Although that would make the rural folk like me more. Here's the thing, though. Our conscience compels us to void the removal treaty. Now, I could void the treaty, but it only prolongs this for three years. And in that three years, the rural folk won't like me as well. I'll get that penalty for five years, which is kind of sick. And I still will need to move them. This will change nothing. All it does is delay it. So it's not really like I'm changing anything. So for that reason, I am going to choose this one. It's in my best interest to do so. It doesn't change anything. It just gets it started sooner. Because the game is going to make me do that anyway. If there was an option to say, no, you don't have to relocate, I would do that. All right. Henry Clay, leader of the Intelligentsia, which is kind of the Whig Party, which is kind of like the more progressive. Um, these are the guys we really want to be on the side of. Okay, this is like Abraham Lincoln stuff here. Okay, so leader of the Intelligentsia has proposed, <clears throat> excuse me, outright prohibiting slavery in all of our new Western territories. Some opponents demand simple moderation, but others are demanding legalization of slavery in all new territories. We, of course, want to accept the proviso and abolish slavery in the West which will make the Southern planters not like us, but everyone else will be more happy with us. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Now, the election hasn't happened yet, so I can't do the suppression thing yet, so I'm going to wait on that. We have 110 more bureaucracy. Let's see if we can improve our markets even more. Rain is still expensive. Uh, we might be able to handle that. Let's go to Kentucky. And I want your fields to focus on maintaining a single crop. This will reduce how much wine we have, but wine is not nearly as essential as grain. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit grain. And I also want you to use harvesting tools. Now, the price of tools is also going to go up. But I want you to use harvesting tools for one reason. 
the labor in this state of Kentucky are slaves in the fields. So I want you to maintain a single crop, but I'm going to use harvesting tools because it reduces how many slaves you're going to use. In a way, kind of makes them less reliant on slavery. If I can make the slaves less reliant on slavery, they may not feel so bad about losing it. Because again, I eventually have to abolish slavery. And as soon as I do that, the South will revolt and everything's going to go nuts. So hopefully I can get on their good side in time. Speaking of which, if you ever want to know how well I'm doing in terms of getting on their good side, take a look at the top of the screen. There are two numbers up here. And they're not necessarily indicative of what it... Like, I feel like the a number of radicals that will happen will be greater than what matters. Because as we expand, it's a little different than other countries. As we expand to the West, we're going to make the Native Americans mad. And I believe they are being counted in the number of radicals. I don't know that, but I think they're going to get counted. So the number of radicals will probably go up. Um, but hopefully, again, we can keep the approval rating of most people up. And a loyalist is the opposite of a radical, okay? We need to keep this number higher than this number, basically, is what we want to try to do. I'm not going to be very successful at it, but I will hopefully, hopefully I will be, but I can't promise anything. Let's go to the grand plan pays off. Henry Clay methodical leader of the intelligentsia has been studying uh, has been studiously working behind the scenes for some time now and at last all of his work has paid off for intelligentsia of the united states the man is so pleased with his actions that he looks like he's about to burst into flames of contained emotion how charming professionally speaking though not the most clever move just as planned. So what did he do? Well, uh, we can say that they can re reap the rewards. This will give 30% more momentum to the Whig Party, which is a very good thing for me, is what I want. Or I can say the United States will reap the rewards. And what we end up getting is a higher reserve gold limit, a 20% lower interest rate. Not as meaningful to me because I'm not going to have, a, I'm not going to reach my gold limit and I'm hopefully not going to loan, get any loans. I probably will get loans, but it's not as much of an interest to me as the Whig Party being dominant right now. So I'm going to let them have clout. Okay, so it looks to me like Mexico won. Ah, Mexico won the war with Texas. So Texas is now Mexican. I'm sure they'll love that. <laughs> um, we're going to try to liberate them. Eventually, we'll try to liberate them. Uh, but in the meantime, what we can do is use some of the spare influence we have. We have a lot of spare influence. And uh, one of the things we can try to do is we can try to... I want to... Where is it? Improve relations. I'm going to try to improve relations with a couple of nations. France and the UK and Spain. They're going to be great trade partners, so I'd like to do that. And, uh, you know, like improving relations with Mexico doesn't matter to me so much because they're going to start taking territory now that I want anyway. So instead, we'll try to take and uh, make friends with, let's say, Hudson Bay Company. And uh, we can go with go with Upper Canada. But now we're really stretching our influence. So I think actually what we'll do is we'll take Spain away and put lower. Well, that's weird. So this is Upper Canada. And this is Lower Canada. But Lower Canada is higher than Upper Canada, and Upper Canada is higher than... Or, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, well, maybe we'll try New Brunswick instead. <laughs> I don't know. We'll just try to improve, improve our relations with people, okay? All right. So, as we see, um, we're at a surplus now and still manufacturing things. We're trying to work on getting our iron industries going. We need, a, we need more iron. So, I'm going to look at... Uh, I think New York has an okay amount of people working iron, right? It's not bad. We could do better, but I think New York will have more people in the iron mines. And I think we can probably go ahead and get Pennsylvania's iron mines started because they have a lot of capacity. 57 is the maximum level for their industry, and that's a really good level. So I think they'll get their iron industry going too. The Whig Party wins with outstanding results, and now I'm allowed to reform my government without any taking any penalties. So, because um, there's a new election. So, reform government, kick out the Democratic Party, and we'll bring in the Whigs. This is going to add to my legitimacy. 
If there is any other group that wants to join the wig party, then they will tell me and I can add them. Currently there isn't. I might look to add the armed forces in the future because they do sometimes, I think they want to join later. Um, if I calling the history of things, um, we're gonna go ahead and hit continue, confirm. And uh, we have now two main groups, uh, social groups, if you will, influential groups in our government. And that is the intelligentsia and the evangelicals, which is ironic because they have two opposing viewpoints. So that's pretty fun. <laughs> um, but now that we have this, we could go in and try to make new laws. Now, remember, my goal is to make friends with more with most people and enemies out of the planters, because that's inevitable. So one thing I want to do is reduce the size of my enemies. To do that, what we can do is we can go into the party for the Southern Planters and we can try to suppress them. But we have to have 200 authority to do this. To give more authority, I'm going to need to stop the road maintenance. I'm going to wait till my industries, my iron industries are up and running here in these states because my construction is more efficient right now. And once that's done, good. We have some money here. That's great. I don't have to raise taxes. But we can actually, actually, I should raise some taxes. Just a, just a little bit. I'm going to go into budget really quick. And I'm going to implement a consumption tax. Now, consumption taxes, kind of a hit or miss. You don't want to do this. And in previous Victorian games, Victoria games, uh, taxing grain was kind of the big thing. They've made taxing grain 500 authority to do this so i won't even be able to tax grain in this game right now not until i have more authority uh, i can tax services but you don't want to do that because literally every single person in the country will use services which is why it's going to give you more money for that but it also really hampers their ability to move up the social ladder we want to improve their ability to move up the social ladder so what we could do is tax luxury items like th things that are frivolous like wine and liquor and tobacco we can tax those things for a little bit less radicalization but the more things we tax the more radicals will form and you can see radicals just constantly climb it's pretty hard to get them not to, not to climb so um as we get more evaluation and more people in the in the country um radicaliza radicalization will simply continue I also want to take a look at the District of Columbia. We're using eight out of possible 10 infrastructure right now. We're gaining infrastructure now from road maintenance, but the thing is, we're not going to want to have road maintenance here forever. So I'm going to go in and add a way for them to gain infrastructure themselves. And that is by giving them a port. And I'm also going to give them access to the rail network, which is eventually going to be hopefully almost everywhere. So we're going to build that. Because I expanded my construction abilities, I have the ability to make four things at once. Now, if I add more than four things, they'll just go into a queue. So uh, if I go into, let's say, it looks like our journal wants us to expand the iron mines in Connecticut. So we'll go to Connecticut and we'll just expand the iron mines because that's what it wants me to do. I need more iron anyway, so that's fine with me. Um, I also don't intend to do anything with whaling stations if I can avoid it. Um, not only does it reduce mortality, uh, of laborers and machinists, which I really don't like, but it only really gives you meat and oil, which I can import from elsewhere. And then I don't have to, in, I don't have to involve myself in, in, in whaling. Okay. If it becomes like, I have to whale then fine, but I kind of doubt that's going to happen. So I'd like to avoid that if I can. Um, so let's see, we have livestock ranches, tobacco plantations, um, like 44 arable land here. We could get a wheat farm in Connecticut. That would probably be good. Put people to work. What's the population in Connecticut like? So industrialists, intelligentsia are there. I want to know. We have a lot of wealthy in here too. Wow. So their standard of living is quite high. Connecticut people are quite, quite wealthy. Okay. Okay. So they probably want like luxury goods and things. And they probably want their urban center to go up too. If I ever run low on bureaucracy, we can add more government administration buildings, which uh, I could probably do here in Connecticut once at least. But I think it might be okay to add a food industries here because we're going to want to take down the price of groceries and uh, getting the food industries in quickly allows us to quell the prices of groceries a little bit uh, faster. But I wanted to show you that if I expand industries, so let's say I want the furniture manufacturer to go up. Paper mills should go up. Let's put the paper mills up. 
Uh, let's say I go into Pennsylvania and I'm like, hey, man, I want to give you guys a railroad. Uh, I want New York. I want to give you guys a railroad too. Let's go. Um, let's up your port level. I do all these things, right? What will happen is they go into a queue. I can only do so many of them at a time. If I increase my construction capacity, then I can do more of them at a time. But I have to pay for all these resources, which means running a deficit. So there's a balance between growing really fast or growing really poor. <laughs> going really poor really fast um okay oh city of plenty the most prominent members of new york's high society have been seen organizing luxurious parties in the new and lavish urban buildings i can say i want to let them celebrate and get 10 percent more loyalists or i can say that uh i want them to really party and um what will happen is more of them will become loyal but they will expect that level of living for nine years they will expect higher living so let's make sure new york is taken care of huh because i want more loyalists all right so um new york being taken care of paper mills going up this is good it's going to lower my cost in government um tooling workshops are massively important we're going to raise those by three they're also very productive which is good so the more demands we have for tools uh you know the more production we're going to have to do right that's how it works uh, the steel mills in Pennsylvania are not very productive, unfortunately. They don't seem to be able to get things done for a reasonable cost. And it might have to do with just steel not being in that high of demand. Steel is discounted 17.8%. And because their product is not in that high of demand at the moment, well, they can't sell it for a reasonable price. And because they can't sell it for that price, they just don't produce it very well. So this stuff has a way of equalizing itself out. If the steel industry dies in Pennsylvania, they'll move on to other jobs that are in more demand, like the paper mills, for example, which are already up and running, and I'm going to increase them. Now, with the paper being uh, increased more, I'm going to go into trade really quick and see if I can... What, what's the paper? Paper is currently at a 15% surplus, so not really yet ready to... Yeah, here it goes. It starts. So, again, I could have delayed this by three years, but you can't delay it forever. It's going to happen in three years anyway. So, um, in accordance with the removal treaty, it is time for the Cherokee of Georgia to relocate the, to the Indian Territory. We are going to offer assistance to them, which means paying government expenses and putting resources into helping them move for the next two years. That will become increasingly more expensive. Um as we'll have multiple groups moving and that rolling two years, right? So eventually we'll be helping like five groups at once and up costing us money, but we're going to do it. Now, we also see that I have a um, 42.5 less authority than I should have. And as a result of this, um, we have 11% authority deficit. And now we have negative 1.1 opposition interest group approval. So anyone who's in an opposition to me will have a lower approval of me because of lack of authority. We're going to change this now. We're going to take the road maintenance away from the District of Columbia. And that should take care of my authority deficit. Now we're doing that. Now I have a 4.7 enactment time, which I believe is with laws. Speaking of which, I want to go into government really quick. And I want to see intelligentsia and evangelicals are happy. Pretty much everybody's happy. Um, so we can enact a law to work us towards that reality of America that we want. Now, doing the rights of women, I could do propertied women, but this is going to radicalize the evangelicals and it's going to radicalize the planters. So it's not the right time to do this yet until I can reduce their clout. So we're not going to be able to do that. One thing we can enact I think right now, if we go into health system, we can go to charity hospitals. Charity hospitals have a boost for evangelicals. Uh, it also gives them more political support, unfortunately, um, but it reduces the mortality of our citizens and really only one interest group opposes it. And that's the industrialists because they don't want people, you know, healthy, I guess. I want them to work in the mines. Go work in the factories. <laughs> I don't know. But we can we can do this. And so the industrialists oppose this. But evangelicals and trade unions, they will like this. And what I can do now is because I give them charity hospitals, evangelicals will like me. And then I can enact property women. And that kind of equals it out, right? There's a compromise there. I give you this, but then I get this in return. And that's sort of what I'm looking for here. So we're going to start by trying to enact charity hospitals. At a base price, or at a base, this has 10.1% chance of success. However, 
there's still 69.5% that are in the debate. So they're kind of like undecided, right? Now, eventually we could do public or public health, but we can't do hospitals and public health until we have pharmaceuticals unlocked, uh, which will take a bit for research purposes. Uh, so I want the paper mills to go up. I want, uh, I want the iron mines to get expanded. We're dropping money. Industries were expanded. Yep, because that's the. Whenever you see that pop up or hear that sound, um, that's just the journal entry being completed. So, for example, we now see that we want to have a level four steel mill in a state. I'm pretty sure Pennsylvania is the only state that has a steel mill. It's not quite productive, but again, as we start to build more, it should become productive. So, I'm going to expand it. And then what I'll probably do is subsidize it. Subsidizing buildings is quite expensive, but I anticipate that steel is going to become much more important, um, especially as we start to get motor industries, which I'm building railroads, so I'm going to need engines. Introducing Detroit. Yay. In case anyone's interested to like where I live in the world, like uh, the United States, go over to the big state that looks like a mitten, and I'm in this area right here. Okay. That's where I live. That generic area. I'm just going to circle this big area for you. Um, so anyway, I live near Detroit. So what I'm going to do is a couple of things for Detroit. We're going to add a motor industry because this is the motor city. And I'm also going to add a university. So we can get qualifications up. So people need to learn how to do the specialized work that goes with the motor industry. We're going to do both of those things. I'm also going to add logging camps to the list right now because we're going to need more wood. And because we're going to need more wood, we're going to be processing more iron and all that kind of stuff. I also need to make sure that we get our coal mines expanded once more. So one more coal mine upgrade for you. And we're good to go. Now, the cost of chemicals or the chemical plant is not doing very well. And it might have something to do with coal being more expensive. Yep, looks like it. And iron is still too expensive. But it also probably because fertilizer is very cheap. So their inputs are very expensive. Their output is very discounted. We can help that. Let's go into the market. Let's go to the trade route. And I don't see it on the list yet. So we should be able to do it. I'm going to have a export. Well, I can do liquor too. Yeah. I can export tobacco, for example. Get some money for that. The French. Uh, let's export liquor to the Portuguese. Um, but what I really want to do is export... Um, well, I lost my train of thought because let's, let's read this so I can stop my train of thought. Our efforts to remove the Cherokee from eastern lands has led to the deaths of many during their overland march westward. We did what we could. It's just there's nothing I could do about it. The game forces me to evacuate them. Uh, I wish it didn't. I wish it was up to me, but it's not. Uh, fertilizer. I want to export fertilizer. And you can see that the British market, will, French market will take a bunch. British market will take a bunch. Um, and this is good because we can now pass some of the economic value from France into our pockets. So I can go ahead and export that. And I can do it to the British too. Now, what that means is two things. It means that fertilizer is about to become more expensive because we're not going to have such a surplus anymore. And so if I take a look at this after it runs for a little bit, you should see the price of fertilizer go way up. And there it goes. It becomes more expensive because there's less of it. Now, as a result of that, though, the plant that's that's creating the fertilizer, the chemical plants, they should be much more productive now. So if I take a look at Ohio. Hey, can I get this? Here we go. Ohio, hi. Um, chemical plants. Much more productive now, right? They're more productive because their good is in need. There is a need for their product, and it is a higher price. So they can make more profit. Therefore, they are here. Right? Now I can expand the chemical plant if I want to. All right, lots of things popping up. Right in my face, but you got it. Fugitive slave, a slave belonging to John Calhoun, has escaped his estate and fled to the northern free state. Well, you know what? If you're on free soil, you're free. Sorry, John Calhoun. Also, the uh, mine in Illinois. Illinois? The lead mines? There are kids mining in a lead mine? What are you doing, kids? Uh, uh, tragedy, yes, I, I see. Outrageous abuse of common man cannot continue. Um, so 
basically the upper strata in Illinois will become more radical for a little while. That doesn't sound good. Mines are a blight upon man. Middle strata will become more radical. I don't think there's a whole lot of upper strata in Illinois, to be honest. Not yet. Trade unions can get more political strength. Or rural folk getting more political strength. Uh, what do I? Who would I rather have? I, that's really the, the that's really the question. Is who would I rather have political strength? Um, also, apparently, charity hospitals has a zero percent chance of success right now. That's pretty terrible. Law enactment failed debates. Ugh, crap. May not be able to get those charity hospitals. Um, okay, so it's either basically between the trade unions and the rural folk. I definitely don't want the industrialists to get some more support because I want to abolish child labor. So let's take a look at politics. Um, I want to look at, yeah, like this. What laws do you want passed? So, anything that I would want. Not really. No, I'd be okay with dedicated police force. Funny that they want no police and dedicated police force. This is the state of our world. Even back then, people are conflicted. Uh, we definitely don't want a state religion. We don't want freedom of conscience because we already have freedom from religion right now. We don't need agrarianism. That's just a rural lifestyle kind of thing, farmland thing. Uh, Consumption-based tax will almost always adversely affect the middle class more than any other class since the middle class are the ones consuming the most. Um, we have migration controls. Eh, I don't really need that. Closed borders, no. Um, so really de dedicated police force is like the only thing you're really interested in that I particularly agree with. Um, if I look at... <clears throat> the trade unions instead. This is a faster way to get to their screen. We can see that they're already loyal, which is good. They're anti-slavery, which is nice. Um, they're egalitarian. So equal and humane treatment of people should be a cornerstone of political policy. I like that. Um, they endorse uh, protected speech. Uh, sorry, protected speech. compulsory primary school. Workers protections. Property. I mean, all of these things are fine. And they don't have very much clout. So I think we want to raise them up and get them more strength. So trade unions, more strength, outrageous abuse of common man. And it's also like the upper strata in Illinois, which I really don't think there's that many of them. They're impoverished. 41% um, literacy, which is not bad. There's no radicals. So I guess if I let it run, there might be get some, we might get some radicals now that we have the... And yeah, net income is low. It's, it's fine. Yeah, most of the things are from subs, uh, subsistence farms, which are really inefficient farms, but they kind of provide a lot of different products. They just provide it in really low quantity. Just enough for people to get by, basically. So you want to replace subsistence farms as soon as you can, like reasonably do so. We'll work on that. I think I'm ready to suppress. I've done enough things where I think I can suppress things now. So uh, we're going to go into our road maintenance thing. Um, I'm going to get rid of road maintenance in Ohio. And um, we have 200 authority now. We're going to go into government. Go to the Southern Planters. They have 17.9% clout. We're going to hopefully make that go way down. So we're going to start suppressing them. And if you want the uh, readout for what that does... It's a, uh, makes the interest group less attractive for pops to support. Base depression ability is your, determined by your free speech law. Suppressing uh, interest groups cost authority, 200 authority be, uh, to be specific. So um, I'm going to start suppressing the Southern planters. And the Sioux are uprising. Of course they are. So the great Sioux Nation has decided that they've had it with our expansionism. They've had it with our people moving west. And uh, they would like to fight back. So, again, I want to help the Indians, but if they uprise against me, if they start it, then I will respond uh, because that's how we do things. So, um, first thing is, let's just go ahead and get rid of all these things. And we have two generals. We have Zachary uh, Taylor, who's a member of the Southern Planters. Gross. Uh, and then we have Winfred Scott, which is part of the armed forces. We're going to use him and we're probably going to end up firing Zachary Taylor. Because having military generals that are part of a specific interest group gives that interest group more influence. So, Zachary Taylor, sorry buddy, 
we are going to retire you. And they'll immediately get negative one interest approval. Uh, that's fine. Goodbye. So he's gone. Now, can we hire a new general? Of course. So we'll go into military and recruit general. Let's see who we can recruit. Um, both these guys are just basically armed forces. So that's good. Uh, we have Shubrick and Thomas Jessup. I don't like that name, Jessup. Uh, you're only going to command one right now, and that's because there's not a lot of barracks in these areas. So, like, the New England area doesn't really have a whole lot for barracks. I think I'll probably put most of my barracks uh, over here in the Midwest, but um, for now, we can put you in here. So, now we've given the clout, if you will, that, that extra influence uh, to the armed forces instead of the southern uh yeah, instead of the Southern Planter. Okay, so we've got all that sorted out. Now let's take a look at the war. So what's going to happen here is there's a period of time in which we are mobilizing our troops, okay? Troops get mobilized. When we're, whenever we're in a military conflict, you're going to see my bottom interface changes it the way it looks a little bit, right? And uh, we can click this button here. We can see the different uh, stages of battle. There's basically like a... There, there's stages to this, yeah. So opening moves, essentially target is worried as you should be uh, but right now it looks like we have a big disadvantage because they have more units than we do in the area for now not forever so um we have we're wanting him to advance the front so that's what he's up to do he's going that way and we can also get thomas jessup to go on and mobilize as well just to really stick it to him so get in there now if we want them to have more soldiers we need to build barracks so i can take and say for example in Ohio, I can build a barracks. A couple of barracks, this maybe. Who knows? Um, so we'll actually just max that out. Yay, the water tube boiler is done. So many things are about to happen for me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pause this. And I think I'm going to do Bessemer process because it helps my steel mills. Um, It'll lead to reinforced concrete too, which is good. Now, keep in mind, um, as I research certain things, some things will research on their own because people hear about things. There's a, there's a rumor from across the pond, if you will, right? In this case, canneries. It's already begun. It started on its own and it's happening simultaneously. So people are just going to do this stuff all by themselves. Same thing with field works. Like army defense is good, right? Um, that's just gonna happen. And uh, so some of the stuff happens on its own. What I'm going to do with society, I think, is I'm going to come down and we're going to get identification documents. And what this does is it increases my taxation capacity and it gives me plus one max home affairs institution investment, which currently I can't do that yet. But once I get home affairs as an institution via laws, uh, then I can increase that institution investment because I have this. Um, but mostly what I'm interested in is the higher taxation capacity uh, because then I can have a smaller government but still maintain the taxation that I want. We're going to go ahead and do that because I want a small government. Uh, big government is expensive. I want to have a smaller one for, you know, not, not as expensive. I take a look at the budget. I think I want to not be in debt. I would really like to really like to not be in debt uh, or in a deficit. Uh, I, I, again, I told you this is unavoidable. We've spent half a million out of our reserves right now and probably gonna spend the other two million pretty quickly, but let's run time ahead real quick here and see what happens. I wanna get this war done in this video. I told you it's gonna be a long video for the first one and I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you do like this, please hit the like button uh subscribe if you haven't already and stuff we're gonna have more videos of this if it works out for the channel then i'll keep playing it that's how i do things if it works then i keep going if it's fun then i keep going anyway uh as long as it's fun i keep playing refining our production uh have four yeah it's, ugh, this this journal entry i don't really want to track it anymore so goodbye uh, slavery debate i do want to track that now you can see if we complete this while well, basically enacting slavery band right and uh we have to do it for 10 years total right if we do this and once this completes the southern planters are going to gain more political strength i'm not entirely sure why that happens but they do if i fail this well civil war breaks out so we don't really want civil war either uh we also have a little proposal here france wants to do a trade agreement with us we're going to accept because that makes our pricing and stuff everything more favorable for us and let's take a look so clothing is only 3% more expensive than the baseline. That's pretty good. We're doing okay there. 
Um, construction materials are still bad. Wood, fabric is still bad. Papers are all right, I guess. Furniture is plus 28. So we should probably should do something about furniture. And I think furniture production is here. We have various different production methods we can do. We're going to do the water tube boiler. Now, the water tube boiler is going to add tool usage, but it's going to reduce how much people need to work. Precision tools are going to do the same thing, but it's going to make luxury furniture. It's going to use less wood, but more hardwood, and uh, also use more tools. So tools are like the big thing. We need more and more tools all the time. We're constantly going to be keep keeping our tooling workshops going because tools are always in high demand. And again, water tube boiler, we can reduce how many people have to work there. And now the tooling workshops in New York are very productive. Uh, very good. We're going to do steel tools. Uh, I could do pig iron tools. No. Plus 100 on the iron. No, thanks. Uh, yeah. So we'll keep working on the tools there. I think uh, textile mills to keep the clothing in check. Although, again, because productivity is low, because it's, you know, the price isn't that high on clothes. So whatever. Um, paper mills are needed. That's going to get expanded. And then I need my iron mines to go up higher. My coal mines to go up higher. My logging camps to go higher. I'm doing it in Pennsylvania and New York because I still have the road maintenance thing and it's a little bit more efficient to do that. Uh, but you see our construction capacity is up here now, which is pretty big. Um, but because we're keeping the cost down, actually it's only 50K. Look at this. I'm spending 50,000 on this stuff right now. Uh, because iron, wood, tools, fabric, etc. right? I need all this stuff for construction. So let's maybe put that up to the higher, higher list. Um, port's done. Railway is about to finish, but we don't have engines yet. Um, at least I don't think we do. Yeah, Motor City needs to get started on its motors. Um, so we're probably going to change the order of things a little bit here. Um, with the railway finishing, the tooling workshops are going to start. Let's get the motor industries to the top. And uh, probably that university to the top as well. Yeah, get the university up there too. Uh Oh, I hit it once, didn't I? Yeah, uh, just put it right there, I guess. It's fine. Uh, steel mills don't need to be... Yeah, steel mills don't need to be first. We can keep them below the university, I think. Um, get the barracks up, and... I think that's kind of it. So yeah, the big the big queue, right? This is the big construction queue that's going to dwindle our bank account to zero. <laughs> Again, now I can, if I had the authority to do so, I could go into you know, my budget and raise taxes. This would give me 22 grand, but it also is going to make more people radicalized unless I'm still improving their quality of life. Um, I think what I'm going to do is let this play on for a little while. We have health taxes. Hang on. Health tax. 0% on this charity hospitals thing. Ugh. Health taxes. The calls for some form of healthcare system. Many are questioning where the money for setting up the new healthcare system will come from. Some are suggesting simply taking it out of our tax funds, while others insist the government should find another way to cover the cost. It says, let me get this straight. You expect us to not only pay for our own healthcare, but someone else's as well? Oh, it's that deal. It's that realization where they're thinking that they're paying for someone else when, you know, the other person paying into it is also paying for yours, right? <laughs> In any case, um, take it from the tax funds would be a permanent tax income loss. We'd also have a 20% uh, uh, enactment success from doing this, but um, the industrialists would lose approval rating. The government should cover the cost, which, you know, 10,000 government uh, expenses, which, by the way, is the same as using all my tax dollars for it. Uh, these two things are pretty much the same thing, so oh, whatever. Um, either way, I don't really want to have a 10,000 uh, permanent loss of tax income. So I'm going to say we can go by without it. It is a charity hospital after all. And that only increases its chance by 10%, which apparently we were at a negative percentage before. So it's 8.8. .8. I'm wondering why we don't have more support for this. It's a charity hospital for Christ's sake. <laughs> the debate continues. 74% are on the fence about it. Have yet to be convinced. Good for them. Oh boy. Uh, okay, I was hoping this this uh, battle with the Sioux would uh, take place. And apparently it has. Is it all gone? Did we, did the war happen? Apparently it just happened. <laughs> it was very fast. 
Okay, fine. Well, the war is done. Um, the Sioux Nation are no more. And, um, you know, they're integrated with the population. It's not like that we killed all the Native Americans, okay? Um, they're just in integrated with the population. Their homelands are Dakota. Um, so their homelands are not the same as existing incorporated states. Um, these guys have Yankee, so we might actually be able to get that one. Yeah. So this one can be incorporated. And uh, we haven't incorporated every state yet. So let's take a look at, uh, I think it's political lens, state actions, incorporate state. These states are actually not incorporated yet. So we're going to go ahead and try to get them incorporated. We're using bureaucracy to do this. Um, in Wisconsin. So we'll try to get them uh, incorporated. Just helps us with our tax income with them. Speaking of which probably should have a government building here in addition to this so let's pop that on the list and i think that's going to do it for this video right now so we have currently 770,000 loyalists 500,000 radicals and more are growing every day it's gonna be hard to avoid the war um so yeah we have um you know our settlers of course are kind of moving this way i could actually tell them that they are allowed the diplomatic lens yeah established colony i want to tell them that you are totally allowed to colonize alberta <laughs> you you go for it you just let's just spread ourselves up there why not so we're gonna go and colonize alberta now too all right that's gonna do it for me again if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already i really hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you next time Bye bye